Hey everyone, Thomas from MasteringExplained.com here. In this video, we're going to look at TDR Nova from Tokyo Dawn Labs. And this is a plugin that has many uses in mastering. So let's go. Okay, TDR Nova is a sort of a Swiss army knife for audio. You can do a lot of things with this. It's available in two versions. One of them is free. You can download it from the website. You will find the link in the description. The other one is a paid alternative called TDR Nova Gentleman's Edition or GE. They are very similar, but the GE version, the paid version has more features, of course, and very useful features as well. But in this video, we're going to look at the free version. So we're going to close this one. And then it has a nice feature I can show you immediately. You right click here and choose 150%. Then we get a nice view of the interface. Okay, so what is this? Well, it is an equalizer and it's also a dynamic processor. So we can use it as an equalizer. We have four bands uh, that you can set to be either a peak band or a low shelving or a high shelving. And we have the common equalizer controls. We have gain, frequency, and Q value. And this is the same as it is in any equalizer. So you can use this as a standard four band equalizer. And it's a very good equalizer as well. It's clean and usable, and it sounds very good. Apart from the four standard bands, we also have a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And for mastering, the high pass filter is probably the most usable and I like to use the 12 dBs per octave somewhere around 10 to 30 hertz or so. So if you're looking for a very capable equalizer then Nova is a very good choice. The paid alternative has more bands. This one has only four but many times four bands are all you need so you will get very far with this free version as well. And then there are some settings at the top of the plugin and these can be left as they are for most kinds of work. The one that you might be interested in looking at is the stereo button and this decides what part of the signal is the equalizer gonna affect and it's at default it's set at stereo and that means that it will process the whole stereo mix. You can also set it to affect only the sum or the mid channel of the stereo mix or the difference channel that is also called the side channel or you can set it to affect only left or only right but for most mastering work this will be set at stereo and sometimes some or difference so we leave it at stereo one button that i usually disable is the eq gain button and what this does is that if we do a sort of more drastic eq then TDR will calculate how this EQ has affected the loudness of the material and it will automatically compensate for this. So if we have, for example, done something that will most likely increase the perceived loudness after EQing, then when this button is pressed, TDR will automatically lower the output level of the equalizer. And that's a good feature, but I don't really like it because I want to be in control over the level at all times. So I will rather set that myself using the output gain if I feel I need to change this. Okay, so to set the band, you can either drag it in the uh, graph area. If you scroll with the mouse wheel, you can set the Q value and you can drag it around and set the gain and frequency. You can also set it down here in this area and you will see only the active band at the moment and the active band is glowing a bit in the graph area and it's also um, and you can also see the button here that tells which band is activated so there's no way to see all the controls at the same time but you have to select which band you want to see and the selected band can also be soloed, so I can hear what's happening in this area. 
And this is a feature that is available in several EQs nowadays. And it's a very good feature. And if you're starting out mastering, then I would suggest that you use this feature a lot when you are tweaking the material that you're working with. Because if you want to learn frequencies, then this is probably the fastest way to do that. Because if you constantly listen to the frequency area that you are working with in a solo mode, then you, your ears and your brain will learn how this area sounds like in different material and it will start to recognize it. And if you also make the connection with what frequency you are working with, then you will more and more develop your ability to hear a material and recognize which areas are too loud, which areas are too soft. If you hear some kind of resonance or build up, then you will begin to immediately notice which frequency area you will find that build up or um, resonance in. So use the solo feature in your equalizer if you have one of those. And if you don't have one of those, then just grab TDR Nova, it's free. And this will help you a lot with starting to recognize frequency areas. And it will also get you a sort of feeling for what the Q value does for the frequency area that is affected. And for mastering, we usually tend to be around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 for the wider bands when we need a more gentle filter to adjust the tonal balance. And we might have a Q value of say four, five, six, if we want to address a resonance or build up with a narrow filter. But those are just starting points. You will usually end up at the Q value that sounds the best. So use your ears. So those are the basic features of TDR Nova. And so far, this is a standard equalizer, a good sounding equalizer. But the magic begins when we enable the threshold of a band. And what this does is that now we have activated a dynamic section of each band. So each band can now be controlled by a compressor. This is a standard compressor with a threshold, a ratio, attack and release. And what it does is that if we solo listen to this band, then we can compress this band only. So we can lower the threshold and make it react to the content within this band. And we set this as a standard compressor. So if you, for example, want to soften this area around 2K, then we can set the compressor to react to this area. And in the total then, we will have a compressor that um, uh, dynamically adjusts the gain when the content of that frequency area is too loud. So if we have a mix that sounds good, but some areas are poking out in a way that is not very pleasant, then we can have the mix stay pretty much intact most of the time. But when there are loud peaks in certain frequency areas, then we can pull those down with a dynamic EQ band. And if you think about this a bit, you realize that there are millions of uses of this kind of processing. And there are lots of problems in mastering that can be addressed by using a dynamic EQ. And now we're going to look at two of those situations. I'm going to show you how to control the low end and how to reduce sibilance using the TDR Nova. So let's start with the low end. Dealing with the low end in mastering is quite a big subject. And one common problem is that the low end is a bit uneven and unstable. And an uneven low end is sometimes caused by resonances in the low end. For example, if there's a bass guitar and certain notes always pops out a bit. If it's an acoustic recording of a double bass, for example, then 
sometimes certain notes will always sort of boom more than others and then the best solution might be to use an eq with a narrow filter to reduce that frequency where the bass pops out but sometimes the bass area is just uneven without having any particular frequency that sort of pops out it's just uneven and then a dynamic eq can be a very good choice and a good starting point for compressing the low end is to use a shelving filter a quite gentle shelving filter i would put it at 0.6 or so so that we have a quite a a gentle filter and then i would make sure to include all of the bass and maybe put the frequency quite high like somewhere two three hundred or so because I want to compress the whole bass and a bit up into the mids with a gentle filter because this will sound pretty natural it will not sound EQ'd or unrealistic in some way because if you have sharp filters and uh, do drastic things then it will begin to sound unnatural but if we have a wide gentle low shelving then we can get away with a bit of compression without it sounding unnatural and then we enable the dynamic section and how you should set the dynamic section when compressing the low end is very much depending on the material itself but a good starting point would probably be around 20 milliseconds for attack and a bit longer release i would say half a second or so is a good starting point and then you work from there because if you have a too short release in the low end then you might not get the stability that you want it, it could actually become more unstable and if you have a too long release then it would start to sound pumping and not very musical so you will have to balance these two to make it sound good with the material that you have and then you set the threshold to give you the stability that you want and if you find that yeah, it's more stable now, but I have lost some low end. I still want to retain some low end. Then you can, of course, use the gain to counteract that so that you maybe end up with the same amount of low end, but now it's more controlled. And as you see, this is not rocket science in, in any way. The main thing to remember is that you have a wide, gentle shelving and you keep it pretty high in frequency to affect the low mids as well because then you will get a more natural sound coming out of the EQ then we can look at deessing, reducing sibilance if you haven't heard that expression that's when you have loud S sounds for example in the vocals or if you have loud cymbals in the drums or if there are other things in the high end or the high mids from the high mids and up you could say that is sort of poking out and sounding a bit painful often it often sounds a bit painful loud s sounds and loud cymbals are the usual uh, sources for sibilance in a mix and the way we deal with those is that we can use a high shelving that is set quite low I'm gonna disable that so we don't see it you can set it to 2 kilohertz or so with a quite gentle filter in this case as well we want to create a dynamic band that sort of affects the whole high end area so in this case we are going to use quite a high ratio like four or five or so and then we're going to use very short attack one millisecond or so and also a quite short release we're somewhere down in the tens twenties of milliseconds and then we will adjust the threshold so that it just touches those loud uh, sibilant peaks in the high end and in the cases where this strategy actually works then we will get a bit smoother high end and those loud sibilant peaks will be reduced in level but most of the high end will stay intact and it will sound very natural because we are not doing any drastic EQing in a specific area or doing any 
radical changes. We're just sort of keeping the whole high-end area in check. And the reason why we go all the way down to 2 kilohertz when setting this area is because if we only reduce the highest parts of the spectrum, then that will leave a focus on the high mid area as well because if we reduce this part then this part will be more prominent so the mix will tend to sound a bit harsher when we reduce the high end and we, it will also lose a bit of air when we reduce this area but leave this area intact so if we reduce the whole area then the mix will sort of keep the balance in the high mid and treble area so the mix will sound still sound open and clear and upfront but it will be a bit smoother so these are two ways that you can use the tdr nova and uh, i hope you found it helpful if you did find this video interesting please hit the like button and subscribe to see more of this and if you have any questions, just leave a comment or if there's any other video that you want us to make, just leave a comment and tell us and uh, I'll see you next time.